Hello and welcome to the third video in a series of game development tutorials on how to make your first game in Godot. In this tutorial we are going to improve our visuals, we are going to add some more tile maps and we will ensure that the camera looks at our level correctly. Remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial I upload, feel free to leave a comment or drop a like. I also have a Patreon page where you can help be a part of this channel, and you'll find all the assets and scripts that we use in this series there too, along with plenty of other things. You can also now join as a free member. Now on with the tutorial. So if you remember last time, we had our tile map create this up here. It looks okay, it's not too bad. Uh, so if we click our tile map again and go to tile set, you'll remember that we dragged and dropped this into our game. Great thing is we can actually do it once again, but in order to do that we do need another tile set. So I'm going to drag and drop a new tile set into this world assets folder. So you can get this if you follow the link in the description or the pinned comment. You can go over to my Patreon page where you'll get access to this asset that I am using. So much in the same way that we dragged and dropped onto here, we can do the same with the decor. And once again, it will ask if it wants to automatically create tiles. Most of the time you're going to click yes. The reason it does this is because it kind of needs to not archive it or put it in a library, uh, but allowing it to do it automatically, it saves us a lot of time because the game just does it itself. So what exactly has this done? Well, much in the same way as the grass tiles is right here for us, the decor is now a subset of that. So this particular tile map node up here now contains two tile sets. And we can have more if we want to. It just depends how big our game is. So remember we made all this. Yep, it's all good. Hopefully yours looks much better than mine. Well, what we can do now is let's add some of this decor. And if we look at it, we can see that we've got some trees, some rock, signposts, bushes, uh, tree stump here. If we're very careful with how we place this, we can make this look better and better as we go along. So for example, let's have a sign here. There we go. Now the sign itself, because it is transparent, you can basically see through the outside, it does look like it is part of that level. And again, once we get into creating a player and having our player run along everywhere, it'll look even better. So you should probably just go ahead and add some of these assets to your game itself. And remember, you can drag all of this area there and just kind of drop that asset in. You can even drag from a tile that is nothing. So this grayed out bit here, no tile exists here, so we can't place a tile here. However, you can still drag with your left mouse button and cover everything as you go down. And it will only select tiles that can theoretically be placed inside our game. So we'll have that tree there, we'll have another tree there. Let's have a rock here. Uh, let's do something down here. Let's have this big rock uh, at the edge there. Let's have a little bush there. Uh, let's have this big bush up here. And remember, you can also go back to the other tile set that we had. It really is as simple as that, as just clicking there, and away we go. We've got our next tile set to work with. And we can just keep going and going and going as much as we need to. So it's at this point that you probably should try and develop as much of the level as you can. Keep in mind that we are going to have a player and we're going to have to test and debug this as we go along. But if you've got a nice level in place, the more of it you have, I would say the better because it gives you more of a testing ground. So I'm going to leave that there for now. So I'm going to zoom out and that looks, yeah, I'd say that looks pretty decent for a level. So you may have noticed if we go to our tile map itself and zoom in. It's a little bit distorted. It's a little bit blurry. So there is a reason for this. When you bring things into Godot, it kind of wants to make it look as best as it can. But what it doesn't quite realize is that we are using pixel art here. So it will take those pixels and it will distort them in a way that we don't necessarily want. We want it to have nice profound edges and we want it to look crystal clear. 
So there is something that we need to do in our settings to enable us to basically have the right effect. So what we need to do is we need to go to project and we need to go to project settings. And we were here previously, if you remember, we changed our run setting there, but we need to go down to rendering. And in rendering, you'll find textures. And this default texture filter will more than likely be set to linear. What we need to do is change that to nearest. And almost instantly, as soon as you change that and press close, you'll see right here that we have our textures looking more like they should do. If you want to have that blurry effect, if you're aiming for that style, then, you know, that's fine. It's your game at the end of the day. It's not mine. I'm just showing you how to do all of this. But I want my textures to be nice and crystal clear. So next thing, if you remember, we pressed play on our game last time and we were presented with something which didn't quite look as we would like it to. The reason being is we haven't got our camera and we haven't got it set up correctly. So in order to get around that, let's now add our camera. So let's close that debug. So obviously we can see our game is being built. It still exists. It's starting to look good. But that camera is what really defines how the game looks and how it is presented to the player. So in order to do that, we need to add a new node. So let's go over here to our scene panel. Let's click plus. We need to go to node 2D right here. And right here, you'll see camera 2D. So if we click on this now and click on create and zoom out, you should see this rectangle here is our camera. And if we press play now, we should see that this has indeed changed. So what has happened here exactly? Well, the default view has moved from it being up there in the far left corner to our camera rendering. So our camera is now looking at our game directly. It's still a bit small, it's not ideal. So let's change how this camera looks. Let's, oh, I tell you what, let's rename our camera as well. Let's have this as player cam. The reason we're going to have that as player cam is because this camera is going to be solely focused upon our player when we import him. So over here, as you remember in the inspector panel, we have plenty of options to change. What we need to do is we need to zoom our camera in far more than what it is right now. And this little icon here is linked. So what that means is that if we change the camera settings on the X, it will automatically change it on the Y for us. That helps us not distort how the camera is looking at the game. So if we were to set this as two, for example, it will automatically set it as two on the Y. And if we press play, we should see a more zoomed in version of our game. And indeed we do. So just how far to zoom in is entirely up to you. It's not my prerogative to say how far you should zoom in. If you think that looks fine, that's fine. I'm gonna have this as six and see how that looks. It might be a little bit too zoomed in. No, I think six might do just fine. Uh, I think I want my character to be able to see either side, but I don't want to see too far ahead. I want there to be surprises along the way, if you get what I mean. But what I would recommend is if you play around with your zoom and just get it to the right setting, make sure you're happy with it. So next tutorial, what we're going to do is we are going to bring in our player. I want to be able to actually start playing this game to a degree because we have our level set up here, but we have no way of actually playing it. We can only actually look at it and admire how nice it looks. So yeah, next time, We'll bring in some assets, we'll work on some animations with our player, and we'll see where we get to. Hopefully, your game is looking better than what mine is right now, but you should just take the time to build up as much of your level as you want to. I might build up a little bit more off camera. But remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial I upload to this series, and I will see you next time.